Hi. Let's talk about baking pans. I don't know if you're a new baker, if you've been around for a long time as a baker, how serious you are about it. This is kind of an arsenal of a baker. This is only an example of what I have. For instance, this is only an eight inch uh, spring form, which means you can open it and the bottom comes off. And that is for cheesecakes. I have that in an eight and then a nine and a couple, couple nines and a 10. Uh, pie plates. I have a little one. That I have a couple of them. This is half of a nine. So if you ever wanted to do a small recipe, just enough for four people, just take, try to find a pan like this, not that easy, and uh, it would be half of a nine inch recipe. This is an eight inch pan. This is a nine inch pan and I have many of them, metal and glass, and I use them interchangeably. This is a 10 inch plate, which is not so easy to find. And that is one and a half times a recipe of a nine. So I do that if I'm going to, to need more. So that's the pie plates. Let's talk about the tart pans. This has a removable bottom. You've seen these, uh, maybe a, a quiche Lorraine might be made in something like this or fruit tart. And you can see that the fluting comes because it's part of the pan. You just press the dough against it uh, whatever that's going to be, and uh, that's why it takes that shape. And you don't make a rim on it, you, you even it off there. I had an accident one time with this because it will tell you to either cook it or uh, put it on a cookie sheet or something. Well, think about this. I had a heart, hot tart in the oven. I put my hand in. Guess what went up my arm? I had ratchet marks on my arm for years. Tart pans are perfectly safe, just be careful with them. This is an eight, and this is, I think, an 11, so it would be one, yes, it's one and a half times this. Uh, these are bunt pans. Uh, the most uh, typical company is Nordic Wear. They make many different shapes and sizes. This is the most traditional. This is the full. That makes a full recipe. But the nice thing about this one is it makes a half recipe. So if you're going out or having people in and you're only serving may maybe eight people, make half a recipe and it makes a very nice uh, little way of serving it. If it's a recipe with a cake mix and pudding like my chocolate is, I just measure out half and use it and put the rest in the freezer and mark what it is. And the next time I want to do a cake, I'll have it. Um, square pans. 8 inch, very typical uh, pan to use for baking and for casseroles, for many things. And uh, lots of times there'll be a recipe for a 9 by 13 pan. And I only want to make half the recipe. I don't, maybe it's something new and I'm not sure I'm going to like it. So I want to uh, see if I do and I'll make an 8 inch. And it's not identical, if you do the math, no, an eight inch is not the identical half of a nine by 13, but I've never had a failure with it. It's always worked out fine. Uh, so that's an eight inch. This is a nine inch, a little less common, but you will see some recipes that call for a nine inch square. And uh, again, can be used as a casserole for many things. Then the, these are your standard cake pans. I probably have six, eight inch and six, nine inch, that's a very typical thing. Anything you wanna do for a layer cake is probably an eight inch or a nine inch layer. Um, these pans, strangely enough, it looks like a lot, but they all fit in one cabinet, sort of nested into each other. That's another important thing when you're getting dishes and pans. Where am I going to put it and will it fit into something, especially if you have a small kitchen and limited use. If you get something with funny handles or something that won't stack, then that's a little harder. These are for little miniatures. I did these for a gourmet bakery one time, the little tiny miniature cinnamon buns that you see. And if you were going to have this, you would want more than one tray because you'd be making more than just 12 little ones. This is a standard muffin. They also have pans, which I don't have. I think they're called muffin tops because they bake it a little differently and you have more of the, of the top of a muffin rather than the, than the base of it. But it's also for cupcakes. And I tend to put the liners in if I'm uh, making cupcakes. Uh, this is a 13 by nine pan. Uh, again, these are two actually because this one 
is insulated. And there's some nice qualities. I don't even know if they're selling them anymore, but the insulated is nice because it, you don't get as much of the little browning around the edges with the insulated, but this is fine too. And 13 by nine you use for many, many things. Uh, also as a casserole. This is a jelly roll pan. It doesn't look nearly as nice as when I first showed it a couple of years ago because I use it for more than cakes. You use it for jelly rolls. You use it for many cookies where it will tell you to press into it. This is a standard size jelly roll pan, which is like 10 by 15 and a half, I think. There is one slightly larger, which I also have, but this is the most typical size. And it's not only good for jelly rolls that you would roll up or whipped cream rolls. It's also good for when you want to roast vegetables because it's got the lip, so it keeps the moisture in there. And it's also um, uh, good for, you can use it as a cookie sheet because it's not that high. So you definitely can use it as a cookie sheet. Here is a regular cookie sheet. And I probably have six of these. Uh, certainly if you're going to bake you want at least two uh, cookie sheets. Uh, if you have a convection oven, you may, may be able to do more than two at a time, but usually even I only do two at a time and look at them and turn them if they need to be turned or even uh, switched on the shelves. The other thing you'll definitely need are racks because that's what you're going to put everything on to cool. That would be, now with cookies, I've told you before, I slide the whole parchment sheet right off the cookie sheet onto the tray. And then it's so easy to remove the cookies when they're cool. But you'll need that for cooling cakes, for pies, for whatever. Uh, so you can just put it on the counter and see the little feet just mean it's raised up a little from the counter to let the air get under it. The one thing I can't show you is I do have a, two, a couple tube pans, and the tube pan, you just think of an angel food cake, and that has a removable bottom. You turn the cake upside down when, when it's cooling, then you take out the center part. Actually, the photography equipment is in front of the door where I keep my tube pans, but that's about the only thing I haven't shown you. My advice to you would be this if you're just starting. I don't know your personality. I know that some people, when they get into something, they go into it gung-ho and they buy everything that could possibly use. I would say start with your basics. It is better to buy less, but buy good quality. Buy good pans. Uh, don't buy things that are gonna dent easily. You want things that are, are going to last. And that's basically what a baker needs to bake. Now, I wanted to show you this tea towel again. Yeah, actually, this is a tea towel made into an apron that I got in Italy. You know I love to collect aprons and tea towels if you've watched me before. Well, a neighbor, Betsy, down the street gave me this very weird tea towel with only my zip code on it, nothing else. So I suggested, well, let's put names of people who watch Nana's Cookery and tell me your continent. And well, you can tell the blue, I guess, is North America because we have a lot. But look how many we're getting. If you don't see your name there and you've ever commented to me, if I don't know where you're from, I didn't know what to use. So just comment and give me your name and your continent. I did lie. I didn't mean to. I said you shouldn't give me your name if you didn't expect me to wipe my hands all over you, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to admire it because I don't want to take a chance that it wouldn't hold up. I want to be able to look at your names and enjoy them. And many people I have met. So I love hearing from you and I wish you happy baking and joy in your life. Bye-bye. <music>